Hello, hello. Thanks for tuning in again to Earth to Claudette. So today we're going to jump right into the word and it is regarding the oil of joy, the oil of gladness. So Isaiah 61 3 states that God provides the oil of joy or oil of gladness for mourning. So why does it seem like so many people are dealing with depression today? I recently read a study that stated that women and children are leading with the rates of depression in society and you know that's really awful you know it's terrible when we think about all the tools and the resources that we're supposed to have that are supposed to keep us in uh, connection with one another and that tool that i'm talking about is social media um, or the internet. It's supposed to bring us together in the sense of us being able to access resources that we didn't have. Like we have Amazon Prime, like you can get something today or tomorrow that you need. Whereas in the past, you had to actually drive out physically to a store or wait several months for a delivery um, or a special item to be delivered to you. But why is it if we have these resources and these tools that are supposed to connect us, we have the Instagrams, the Facebooks, the YouTubes, why do people feel so disconnected yet still? You know, and that is a great mystery. I do believe that just like within the law of physics, for every reaction, there's going to be an equal and opposite reaction occurring <laughs> you know so while we have these tools that are supposed to bring us together in some ways they are actually separating us it's making us feel or many i shouldn't say all of us but i could say that for many and sometimes myself just because you have access to someone's perceived life it doesn't mean you really have access to them or to their lives and that could make you feel lonely it makes you feel empty the internet and social media and all of these web tools and resources they are no replacement for genuine human connection and connectivity that we as beings cultivated and created by god are meant to have so back to the topic at hand right so the oil of joy so why is it if god has this available tool this wonderful tool of joy and we look at joy as a technology so i'm tapping into uh <laughs> prophetess trim she talks about um the resources in the bible as tools as technology so if you look at the oil of joy as this divine technology from god for us to combat depression to combat sadness why is it that many are without it and even sometimes ourselves i know that there are days where you know it's, it doesn't feel like a great day for me you know it may not feel like the happiest of days but that is where the tool of joy, the oil of joy that God has commissioned for us to have comes in. So in this specific verse, it says the oil of joy for mourning. So the cool thing about this technology or this tool of joy, this oil of joy is that it's supposed to be contradictory. <laughs> it's supposed to act as a miracle agent that's supposed to counter what you may be experiencing or what you may be feeling in the present. So if everything around you says that, oh, you're supposed to be sad, you don't have this, you don't have that, um, nobody wants you, whatever, like God is like, Oop, but I got something for you, I got joy for you. So it doesn't matter what's going on around you, like I have something that you can access that will make your days brighter and that is my joy. So what I have personally experienced about the oil of joy is that, first of all, Israel, all right? I had a discussion with a, um, a young woman I grew up with, and she posted on her social media that, you know, that Christians should be after happiness and not joy because, you know, some sort of, I think it was BetterHelp or, you know, some website um, that's supposed to be a psychology-based forum stated that happiness is greater than joy you know and so she was saying in line with that definition that christians should be seeking after um, happiness right so here's the thing joy is a fruit of the spirit and i was telling her that i'm like well yes we should desire happiness and i know that god wants us to be happy 
but do not discount joy over happiness. I do believe that God is deliberate and intentional with his wording because we serve a God who brought things into fruition by speech. So your words matter and God's words matter. So you don't play with them. Don't play with the terms that God uses. I know that when we read the Bible, there are different translations, but certain terms hold weight and across translations you see those words and one of such is joy so she was saying that the church was wrong uh we're supposed to be after happiness and not joy but you know this has been a, a discussion for years joy versus happiness happiness is supposed to be temporary and joy is forever you know so i don't want this to be a discussion about semantics however i do want it to be a discussion about joy and how we shouldn't limit that we shouldn't discount it no matter what society is saying about it no matter what society is is uh putting above it whether they're calling happiness greater than joy what does the word of god say joy is an oil that the lord gives us joy is also a fruit of the spirit and because it's a fruit of the spirit because it's something that god is speaking to several times in the Bible, and he does talk about happiness in the Bible, but joy is the predominant word. It's the word that comes up more <laughs> than any other word when, it, when we're referring to gladness and to an elevated state of being. Um, joy is the word that God uses, is the term that God uses, is a technology that Jesus uses to help us, to help his people, to feel better no matter what's going on. So if you have been feeling like joy has uh, been evading you, like you've been in a dark moment or dark time that you don't know what you should be joyful about or be happy about, I want you to take courage and know that the oil of joy is accessible to you and it is real. It is very real. So again, so for me, how I've experienced the oil of joy is just bouts of extreme gladness. Like I don't know what else to say. <laughs> You know, and um, reasons to smile, reasons to get excited again about something. And it could be simple things that the oil of joy would just rise up in me and make me just be grateful. So it ties into the other fruit, right? Because if you are grateful to experience this day or grateful to see a friend, like joy arises from that because you know that God made that possible for you. God made it possible for you to be here, to have that moment, to step into that divine encounter that you are just extremely excited about. So joy is just, it's a mystery, it's a miracle, but it is not outside of our reach. It's not outside of our grasp as Christians. I do not subscribe to any ideology that says that Christians have to be just suffering and uh, sad and gloomy and serious. No, while different ministers have different callings and have different um, angles in which God has called them to speak about, I am pro-joy, all right? So first of all, for you to get this joy, just know that you go to God to get it, and he has it for you. It's accessible to all of us, all of his children, no matter how sad you are, no matter if you've had to get on some medication, you know, to get your mentals and your hormones balanced and right. God has joy accessible to you. So pray for the oil of joy to touch your heart, to touch your, your eyes, to touch your mind, and for God to just show you reasons to be happy again and ways to engage that happiness. I do believe that there are times where we have to actively do things that will cultivate that joy. So yes, you pray and then you go out there and you do something or you watch something or you listen to something that stimulates joy in you, right? So another way that you can be careful about cultivating and maintaining your joy is to be clear and intentional and deliberate about the entertainment sources that you go to, that you listen to. A lot of these artists, these music artists, many of them are depressed and they will make music out of their depression and the weight of that thing, because it's a spirit and that's like also, you know, a type of oil or a type of of thing or residue or remnant that sticks to their music. And once you play that, if you play songs that speak to depression, you know, inadvertently, maybe with other words or other terms or other names, 
you expose yourself to that feeling and then it's like your emotions become in tune with that song. So in order to cultivate joy, to receive it, you pray and then God gives it to you and you cultivate that thing. You listen to songs that are uplifting. You listen to songs that give you reasons to smile, gospel, or it could be classical. It could be other genres. There are genres out there that cultivate joy in a healthy and positive way. I would first recommend gospel, of course, because I feel like that's the best one. Um, and gospel songs that are uplifting because some can be heavy, but anyway. But yeah, so check your entertainment sources, uh, check what you're listening to, check what you're reading, and also check your activities. Make sure that if you are working in a field that can be heavy, like say the healthcare field, that could be a little heavy at times. Um, or you are heavy in ministry or teaching, whatever, make sure you take time to do things that you like, that you love. If you haven't done something that you love or you don't even recall the things that you like, go back to your childhood. What are some of the things that brought you joy that you looked forward to doing each day, like when school was out that you couldn't wait to get outside to do? Um, and going outside is a part of it. So I'm not talking about just jumping on you know, TV, playing video games. You can do that because that can cultivate joy, but make sure that some of your activities involve going outside because I am a proponent of outside, of nature, of all things outdoors, okay? So make sure you tap into that outdoor <laughs> joy, going for a walk, going for a run, um, going to a park, sitting and reading, taking your work outside. If you have a porch, a backyard, can you work from home outside, right? So just tap into your joy. Know that it's available to you. Know that it's accessible to you. Know that it is a divine, heavenly technology that God has made available for all of his children. So I pray that the Lord of hosts, the God of joy, visit you as joy today in the name of Jesus and that that joy that he gives you, nothing can steal it away, nothing can tamper with it, nothing can take it. And he gives you all that you need to be able to cultivate that, to sustain that joy and also share it with your loved ones and all of those around you. So may the Lord of hosts be with you today. May he cover you, may he keep you encouraged and show you that you have so many reasons to be joyful already, that because you are here, because you are alive, you are so blessed that no matter what you're going through, that he has a higher level for you, that he has more for you. May you be encouraged. And again, may the oil of joy be upon you now and forevermore in Jesus name. God bless you.